So it's the Four Birdies Fantasy Football Podcast, and it is uh, Wednesday night, about 1041 Eastern Time. And Sean, you uh, you pick what, six? You pick six? Six overall pick. Yep. And I picked third. And then Dave, you picked what? I was at the seventh spot. You're at the seventh spot. Okay. So there are 12 of us in the league. Um, my brother, you guys, uh, Jeremiah, uh, another host of Four Birdies, and then a couple, a couple other friends. Uh, Sean's girlfriend's in there, Cassie. Um, Dave, our mutual buddy, Steve, is in there. Um, and, and then other friends, Harold's in there and all that stuff. So we did the, we did the draft, what, two weeks ago. It was Wednesday night before the Lions played the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And that was awesome because the Chiefs won. Uh, and we tried to record it. We tried to get the podcast going. The Chiefs won? I mean, God, the Chiefs. I'm just, God, look, I'm such like a sad old lion that that's just... How like I guess it you just half expected them to lose. Yeah, I guess I'm half expecting them to lose. They yeah. won that game, Alex. They, but they you won. did lose week two. Yeah, we did lose. Like I'm on the team. We did lose week two. Should have had that game. Should have had that game. There were a lot of injuries. There was a holding on the last pick play. Six. There was a pick six. The Classic Seahawks. Jared Goff. The Seahawks did miss two field goals, but we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, I think we were going to talk about, you know, who was your first, right? So, um, so Sean grabbed Chubb at the sixth spot, and I think he regrets that now. But you never know when there's going to be a major the... injury. And I don't think Chubb is an injury-prone player, so you can't predict something like that. No, so he no, could have no, been no, great no. for you. It was such – I felt like it was such a good pick there at number six. Gosh darn it! I mean, I was gonna okay. miss on the elite wide receiver. So who went? Who went first? Uh, Jeremiah took uh, uh, McCaffrey, right? McCaffrey went first. Yeah, yep. and then Alex. Um, who did you pick? One, two, three. Were no, you Jamar Chase? Steve had two. Steve had two. He got Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. I would have taken yeah. him if he were available for sure. And then I yeah. took Jamar Chase. I couldn't. I was. Once again, I was completely like, I was like one um, short breath and aneurysm away from like dying, trying to get the podcasting set up going. And I didn't even know, I couldn't even, I didn't even have the app on my phone. I, I logged into the wrong email address. Chaos. If you were, yeah, it was pure chaos. You it was trying to help embarrassing. A -year -old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was trying to help, help Harold at the same time. And, and I, so what happened was we had, and Dave, you decided to do it through Yahoo, which I'm not going to – like, I did say some pretty bad things about Yahoo uh, that night we drafted, but I've kind of come around a little bit. I, I'm i more used to the ESPN format. And, and I personally, I, I really dislike ESPN. I'm in, I'm in one ESPN league this year, and it just is laid out a little bit goofy. And you have to watch an ad before you can even check your matchups. Mm -hmm. Makes you watch a 30 second ad before you can even just look at your team. And you're like, this okay, is crazy. quick tangent um, on the ESPN app. Sometimes they'll put the little banner at the very bottom. So you like, it's got the five different options that you're trying to click on. It's like scores, uh, you know, alerts. I don't know what all that stuff down there. But they put a banner down there for some like UFC fight. Well, you can't click any of the options. Like you can't look at the scores down there until you click the banner. And so they're probably saying to themselves like, oh, look at all this traffic that we have. We've got this, you know, all these clicks through. Well, you can't do anything on the site until you click on the stupid banner. Yeah, that's like what, a dirty move. I'm not a fan of apps in general. I usually just use the website. But even on the website for ESPN, you have to watch a 30-second ad. You can't exit out of it. It has to play. You can't click on I mean, yeah. I guess if you clicked on it, it would take you through, but you don't want to do that. I love the I just, I think ESPN is dirty for that. You do. I, it's easy to use, and there's none of that ad or type what is, of bullshit. Yahoo what is you, better. Yeah, I like, I'm a big Yahoo guy. Yeah, and I'm in a CBS um, league as well. That's all right. You know, I feel like it's more professional than Yahoo. But I think um, for our for our purposes, a simplified site like Yahoo is probably better. I've, this is probably the first year in 10 years I haven't been on the ESPN uh, app, you know, a fantasy football league. And I just chose to focus on this league and one other, and they're both Yahoo. And it's just seamless. Mm -hmm. I like it. You had to focus. Sometimes life is all about focus. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes. It's yeah. Like... Well, if anyone cares, so my first pick was Bijan, 
and I was actually targeting Chubb. Bijan Murphy? Like, Interesting. I'm going to yeah. have to focus really hard because my team is fucked. Yeah. So okay, hang on. I, I so, would have I would have grabbed Chubb if if he if he fell to me. That was my guy, and I was like, you know what, Bijan's a consolation prize here. So you get that? He picked right behind me. He was gonna grab yeah, Chubb. Chubb, the Chubb. And Stern. I was looking at his guy too. I was debating. Okay, so who went fourth? It was I got Jefferson. I'm trying to think who went fourth. I don't know who Space Space Angel Dust is, but they took Eckler that at four. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, and, but he was wasn't Eckler hurt to start the season, or is he still hurt? Eckler, table right now. Eckler, yeah. Eckler played the first game, and he's he missed the second. He might miss the third. I've I've heard that there actually might be some um, strategy behind him not playing contract wise. He Ooh. might not necessarily be hurt, but doesn't yeah. want to go back and play. Yeah. Doesn't want to put his body on the line for the contract that he signed. He's a major. Uh, he loves fantasy football too, by the way. He Does is. he really? Oh yeah, yeah, he has his own shows, just like this podcast. We need to tune in on that. Yeah, we not as successful. Him on the next show. Yeah, he's huge. He's he's totally into it. He gets a lot of coverage. But, Does he? Yeah. yeah. Okay, who won fifth? That was fifth. Was Tyreek Hill for gives me another Jameson. He's okay. I mean, Tyreek Hill's okay. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's a little soon for him to go. I know he's going to go first round. I don't think I'd usually see him go fifth overall. I don't know. I disagree. Um, Tua, I mean, if I could have somehow grabbed Hill and then Tua later, that would have been a huge value pick. But I, I couldn't. I think Tyreek Hill is insane. Did – um. And Tyreek Hill is insane. I still verdicts out with him for me. I, I, I don't know. I'll keep my mouth shut. That guy, he's a little sketchy, but – um, but can we jump back to Jamar Chase for a second? Because I it auto drafted for me. I I not I think I was gonna pick him. I'm pretty sure I was gonna pick him. Well, um, he went average draft pick was number two behind Jefferson. right behind Jefferson and Jeremiah grabbed McCaffrey because he knows how good he is and also how much I love him <laughs> as a 49er fan. He also is from Carolina. Well, so oh, uh, is he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, McCaffrey played for the Niners. That's uh, not a bad Panthers, pick. of course. And Jamar Chase is—he's gonna bounce back. He's gonna get his points. He better. Well, I mean, so, so Burrow's we'll, not gonna so get. We'll 80. see what happens if, if Burrow can't figure out this calf injury. Chase might have a rough, a rough year. <sighs> okay. Yes, you're right. He needs to bounce back from the calf injury, but he is still an elite thrower of the football. Mm. He, he is, is good. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of times we don't see those injuries, right? We're just like, we see super shitty stat lines, and then we're like, well, that guy sucks. But, you know, they might have like a broken rib that we don't know about. They might have something that's just preventing them from actually throwing the ball super well. He's got, it's, is it his right calf where he pivots? He's got to put that. I got to be honest, I'm not sure if it's his right, right or left calf, but it's one of those lingering soft tissue injuries that, you know, it's really hard to shake. So the average person, it, it could take them months and months to recover. Sean, it'd probably take Who's you a couple weeks. Him for a while. <laughs> hey. yeah. You're you are part Wolverine. Is that is that it? Part Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just too. like remove any kind of what did? Uh, hang on, let's see. Orange Shinola. That's Jeremiah. What the hell? He while we've been messing around, he's lollygagging. How do I read this? Where is Orange Shinola in here? He added Rashawn Johnson and dropped Kareem Hunt. Oh, I'm grabbing him right now. You can't. I don't think you can grab Kareem Hunt until he clears waivers. So if if he already picked him up it, like yesterday, yeah, if he picked him up and had him for a day, I think he would go back into waivers. Um, I don't know if he's a free agent or not. Let's see. I don't think Kareem Hunt is going to get more than 40% of the carries. So I don't know how viable he's going to be unless Ford gets hurt. True. I'm not even sure. Like, I'm, <laughs> you, I'm trying to – I'm just scrambling at this point. I'm yeah, I'm to scrambling too. any running back depth because, like I said, it was all based on Chubb. Yeah. I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah, so Kareem Hunt went back to waivers, so it's going to process in like three days. Really? <sighs> yeah. yeah, we'll see how it and goes. So speaking of waivers, um, I'm not really a fan of waiver order anymore. I kind of was.
think it might might be too late for this lead, but fab dollars and fab budget. I think. Yeah, why do you ex why do you explain that again? Like, tell us what like tell us what how our league is set up, and tell tell us what like previous leagues are, have been set up, like the auction uh, style. Gotcha. So for our for our waiver system, it is the inverse order of the draft. So if you if you picked first in the draft, you're going to have the last waiver order, and that goes on the whole season it doesn't reset every week based on standings so if you pick last you get the number one waiver you can hold on to that and once you use it you lose it then you go back to the 12 spot but if you just have a fab budget which sean i don't know if you've done an auction uh like a fab um uh, waiver system before but everybody has an equal shot at grabbing the player they want everyone starts with the same budget and you do like one blind submission for the the bid and then um highest bidder gets them now what i was talking about with a buddy was like what if there was an auction style to pick up um players off waivers like once a week on like tuesday night for an hour you nominate a player and you bid on them uh, the highest bidder gets them well, that would be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think people have the time to do that every Tuesday night to bid on players. But um, the leagues that we're doing the fab budget is pretty pretty nice because er anyone could have a shot at somebody like a Puka Nakua. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! But with the wait with the NFL waiver NFL system now, the waiver two priority hey, order. Dave. There's no way you're going to get them. Dave, can wow. I ask you a question? I love that. Yeah. Have you been huffing paint fumes all day? I, I have not. Why? Why do you ask? You you just look. You've got kind of got that look in your eye where you're like one paint fuming session away from like murdering somebody. Jeez, jeez, I didn't know. I didn't realize it. I'm just like in the zone. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah. No, I don't tip. I don't. I don't have paint. Um, typically. Yeah. Most I mean, things. you don't. You don't. You you don't use your product, right? It's the lighting. The lighting in here is not great. Yeah, that not might be part of it. Not everyone has fifteen dollars to buy light rings like you guys. <laughs> they were seven dollars from Home Depot. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. Thank you, China. I, anyway, I, I, blew, I blew the budget on the mic. I don't have any money for a light now. Yeah, I know. I totally uh, derailed that entire conversation. So, so, but I feel like you were holding that joke in for a while. <laughs> you wanted to say that since like probably for weeks. No, I didn't want to say it for weeks, but I I didn't want to interrupt you at, at the same time because it was like a nice you were, like the way you were no, explaining I, it was I really nice. You weren't even listening to anything I was saying. Like the little hamsters in your head were just like, make the joke about the paint, make the joke about the paint. <laughs> what did I? Do you even remember what I said? What did I say? Um, you would get cream hunt if you were available. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it, it's too late in this league to change it to uh, Fab, but for next year, I think that's what I'm going um, to And the fa Fab is just an auction. That's what you're saying, like a Tuesday morning, it's, Tuesday night? It's not an auction. It's a blind bid, basically. I think oh, an right, auction right. implies okay. that like yeah. you are bidding against people at the same time, and you can see what their bids are, and you can opt them. This is just one blind bid submission. You just enter your number. And you know, the next day that's a badass system. Out. Why are we not doing that? Because I would have gotten Nakua as well. I just would have bid all you my. Could have. I so would have just in, bet all my, my money. In my other Yahoo league, we started. It's an arbitrary amount, right? Whether it's a hundred dollars or a million dollars, everyone starts with the same amount. So I made the budget five hundred dollars, and uh, why didn't you go bid. with a thousand? You you could have you could have done ten million if you wanted to. The standard for Yahoo is a hundred. But I thought people would probably overshoot their budget then run out. And I felt, felt like if they had 500, you know, um, they it would last them a little bit longer, right? Yeah, it's so like the winning poker, bid, the yeah. winning bid for Puka Nakul was like $51, and which in, only in retrospect, that's spend, pretty good. Like 10%. Ten, ten that's it, you're your, out? You're, so once you spend the money, you're out? Once you use up all your fab dollars, you can still pick up free agents, but you can't bid on anybody um, but it, unless you do a trade for more fab dollars. But it works like America where you can keep adding more money, right? So the richest guy wins, right? 
So you could acquire more fab dollars. Okay, good. As long as capitalism so not, is like the cornerstone. You can't just, you can't just print this. more fab dollars. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. Okay, so the, it doesn't translate to real life. It it does not. But um, I was conservative. I shame. bid. I bid like uh, thirty five dollars. Right. In retrospect, way under bid because they're they're saying now like Puko is probably worth up to twenty percent of your your fab budget. And he got taken for 10% of the fab budget. Now, so the guy that got him got a steal. So Jerome Ford right. just went for 76 bucks, for example. I think people are starting to realize, like, hey, if you really want your guy, you got to spend the money. Mm. You know, you you may be able to get certain people for a dollar. If no one's bidding on, a, like, a Zach Ertz, you could, you could snag him for a dollar. Or don't bid on him at all. Wait till after the fab uh, uh, bid process closes, and then all those players – become free agents and you can just pick them up for free. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, now we can agree that we, most of us saw this Puka Nakua thing coming, right? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, because so, he so was I'll playing my 49ers on mm. week two. And I think he had like 14 catches. Yeah. So in, wow. in my, in my experience, um, in my dynasty league, the commissioner, is a very shrewd, very, very good fantasy football player. So if he is interested in a player, it typically means something, right? So in our Dynasty rookie-only draft back in, like, May, he drafted Puka Nakua in, like, the sixth round, and, like, nobody knew who he was. Shit. And we were thinking, okay, this guy could be onto something here because he's, he's a Cooper Cup owner. So maybe mm -hmm. he was taking his handcuff, basically. But nobody knew who Puka was, and he knew. He said, "I have been scouting this guy. Yeah, I think he's got potential." Wow. He's so, like traveling. I've been, I've been, I've been on the ground. I've been traveling, scouting this guy. Seriously, that is whack. Yeah. And so I'd have to ask him, like, why he was so high on his draft board. Well, okay, here's the thing: he went in the sixth round of a rookie only, right? But the commissioner of this league did not have any early picks. I think his first pick was like in the fifth round because he had done lots of trades. So for him to like not have any early picks and come away with arguably the best rookie. Well, he put up 30 points last impressive. week. I mean, who else put up 30 points last week? Hurts, my boy Hurts didn't. He, he put up 28. I don't know who else put up 30. Wow. Man, I mean, that's... he's a rookie. I mean, he, like in, in hindsight, it's always like, oh, yeah, well, Stafford's throwing to him. So, duh. You know what I mean? It's always like. I'm just impressed you drafted him in the sixth round. That's like yeah, he knew something. That well, and what cool. and and in, in IRL he got drafted in the fifth round. So we have to give credit to both your you know your boss or whomever, and then also the Rams front office because they saw something in this guy. And oh, well, <laughs> so the, I mean? the, que the question he is, fits so in the system. Maybe if, he's a system player. Maybe he's not. I don't know. Well, when when Cup comes back, what's going to happen Who's that? to Puka? When Cooper Cup comes back, what's going to happen to Puka? I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, he's obviously going to lose some of those reps. He's going to lose some of those catches. But, I mean, if he's getting, what, he got 14 last week and he got 14 the week before, I think he's at, like, 30-something. He's going to go down to, like, 12. They're just – it's – Cup's still going to get a ton of passes. They probably – if you know, they just traded Cam Akers, right? So, so now they're probably going to be – I mean, Stafford is, like – he's one of the – he's got one of the best arms in the NFL, so – I, I think they're gonna. He's still gonna be a weapon. He's gonna drop in points. He's probably gonna put up maybe twenty four to twenty five points a week, right? That's a little high. He here's might not. I, You're, I, I mean, you could be right. Yeah. That, that I be. think I think people's expectations are un, unrealistically high for Puka Nakua. I mean, he's had two amazing weeks to start his career, I mean, but I don't think that production is gonna continue. And I don't want to sound like a hater here. But well, he's not even just, a great value at this point. What's a value the, mean? He, he's gonna start getting to probably double teamed a little bit more there's no way defenses are going to be surprised by him at this point they're going to focus a little bit more that could open up some more opportunities for like an atwell for example but, but i i hear what you're saying but it's not like he's a stretch the field like i'm gonna you know i'm gonna burn you i'm gonna like aj brown right i mean he's not like uh, gonna leap over somebody and catch it over them He's fast. He's going to run out there. He, he's gonna... Is he quick or is he fast? Cause I think he's, he's quick. Probably quick I, yeah, good you're right. Runner. He's quick. Right. Yes. I think that's, um, you know, AJ he's Brown. A great route runner, too. Right. He's, he's a great route he's runner. Find those open slots. Yeah. You guys are right. I, I mean, feel, he, he's... I feel like the thing is, like, if Stafford trusts the receiver and he's looking for you, 
you're going to get lots of production. Um, not every quarterback is capable of that kind of thing. So I feel like um, if Stafford starts to struggle, then Puka's going to struggle. But Stafford's having a great year so far, right? Last year, he was terrible. Last year, nobody wanted he him. He wasn't right. So the Rams year. have really He's bounced back. back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Who's that? Who, who, who was drafted fifth? So Eckler went fourth. Eckler, Eckler was fifth. Oh. Yeah, and then Chubb was sixth, and then Bijan was seven. Yeah. Okay, then who was eight? Should we should we talk about Bijan for a second? I mean, his first week. I don't. I don't. You know, I didn't see too many of the highlights of his second week, but he definitely showed out. Like he's. I mean, he had he had one run that was along the right hash, and then he like made a guy miss. He made another guy miss. He ran in for a touchdown. I mean, so he's, he's pretty good in my boss's league, who I manage. I drafted him. I think nine of twelve. He oh. fell that far. But he's looking pretty promising. I mean, what what is yeah. what are his uh, stats, Dave? I mean, he's well. He from, so from what I've from week. what I've heard, as far as like how he looks, you can just tell he's one of the most talented running backs in the NFL right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Stats wise, um, what does he have? Receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown. Mm-hmm. His stats don't stand out too much. He's not been putting ludicrous games out. What was surprising is how well the Falcons are doing this year. I would have thought. Are they 2-0? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're 2-0, and yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're playing the Lions this week, actually. I think last year they ran the ball more than any team in the NFL. Did yeah. they really? Yeah. Wow. Who are their backs? <laughs> Cordell Patterson, right? There's Cordell yes, Patterson. Cordell Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> Cordell. Okay, as right know. now, Bijan's got one receiving touchdown. But no rushing touchdowns. Bijan? Kind of no, he de- I, I'm 99% sure he scored in the first game. Yeah, receiving touchdown. Oh, it was a reception. Gotcha. Yeah, Rainbows. and Algier had a big game first week, too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with Bijan. You okay. know, as my anchor you should here. be, you jackass. So, okay, so yeah. let's talk about that. Let's, uh, Chubb went down. I didn't see it. I was at a work event and. I didn't see – actually, I think I was driving into the work event. I did catch some of the game, but I didn't see him get hurt. Well, I mean, apparently it was really gruesome, right? Yeah, so I missed it. Um, I was watching the game on my phone, and I set it down for a second, and then they said, oh, Chubb's down. Oh, this replay, yeah. I guess they played it one time, and they realized, like, wow, we should have played this again. Yeah, yeah. So when, when I think the old was Gray, Gordon said, this Hayward replay injury. is not to be seen again. Then I was like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty serious, I guess. So it took me a little while to find it online. Uh, and then when I saw it, I don't know if you guys saw it, it looks like pretty much every ligament in his knee was compromised. It's awful. The MCL. And the, the only the thing a- holding his leg onto, his UCL. lower leg onto his body was his skin, probably. Oof. That's uh, it's so frustrating. It's very sad. And I didn't mean to laugh earlier. I just, you know, it just, it's shocking how that stuff happens but it's such a violent sport you know yeah so like sean and i were talking earlier at his age with the recovery timeline i don't know if he's coming back from that it's going to be a solid well i think he'll be back next more. season i do think um he'll play it's next season still, and the week the know. season after and the season after that it would be great if he could but the amount of rehab it would be required to come back and then perform at that level I don't. I don't see it happening. I think he just probably. I don't think he'll. If he was like twenty five or twenty six, maybe. But I think he's like twenty eight, maybe twenty nine. I think. So who who are they playing that game? They were playing. It was Cleveland versus the Steelers, Steelers right? Yeah. Do you guys remember that play? Was it what happened? It was there was pass interference on the Steelers were winning twenty two to twenty seven. I want to say, and then. The they committed pass interference on the Browns. Did you guys watch that? I mean, it was like blatant, and it was another one of those game-ending plays that they that they just swallowed the whistle and they didn't call anything. And the the their uh, commentators after the game, they're I mean, during the game, they're saying like, I can't believe they didn't call that. How do you not call that? It's a total penalty. I mean, another time this happens, and that one was blatant. I mean, I just couldn't believe that that it happened it's what do you think a referee's looking at at the end of the game like if you're not looking at the play that's unfolding and like if you're not following the ball what are they looking at 
Uh, you know, I've never been a ref, but I just want to backtrack. So I just looked it up. Chubb is 27. So that's not as old as I thought. He already did Chris this to possibly, his knee in college as well. Yeah. He possibly, I don't know if he had a warranty on that knee work in college, but I think the warranty's up. I think he could come back then at 27. But our team's going to want to sign come back? him. Of course he can come money. back. If he came back, I, I'd be super ha- I'd be super happy if he came back. Yeah, but as far as what him. are refs looking at, you know, I think a lot of times refs don't want to have on the last play of the game a big call or penalty decide it. So a lot of times they do just right. let but it play out. Wouldn't you rather not have the last play of the game be a call that's not uh, uh, on a play that's not decided on a call? I mean, like, so oh, you're like, okay, well, I don't want to make it a call because. It's it's the last play of the game, but they it's, don't want to decide the game necessarily. But I also but think by that, them not deciding the game, they're not they are deciding the game. By them not I'm deciding, thinking. they're also deciding the game. So why wouldn't you decide the game by the book, the rules of the book? Yeah, so I I wonder if sometimes it just happens so fast that we're looking at it on TV and we have the benefit of the replay, right. but in the ref size, it might not be so obvious. But why don't they have it? Why can't they call it down from, from up above? Why can't so, Terry McCauley, why can't they, he just call it in and say, I mean, if we want to play, if we want these games to be played fair and square, like they should be played, every sport should be played fair and square. That's why we're playing You're the game. talking about the Lions game. I'm talking about the Brown Steelers. The Lions, yes, exactly, Sean. Exactly. You're talking about the Lions game. Exactly. I mean, same thing. He got held. Hutch got held at the very end. And I wonder I wonder if the NFL as a as an entertainment business is okay with controversy to keep people talking. Maybe I see what you did there. I see what you did there. there. Calling an entertainment business. I mean it is ultimately, you know, yeah. They want to make sure things are legit, but they also want to get ratings. That's that's how they make money. Yeah, true. So I feel like a little bit of controversy and and getting you know creating buzz among fans gets some uh, gets them coming back for more. I think. We were on to what number eight? Number eight, eight pick. There are twelve people in the league. Are we on eight? Twelve people. Yep, I'm pulling it up right now. So um, as far as draft results, are we talking like the rundown of notable picks? Can you just uh, read 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for me real quick? So oh, can... man, geez. Okay. So, yeah, I was Bijan at 7. Uh, Bangkok Lady Boys uh, reached for Travis Kelsey in the 8th spot. And then Diggs went number 9 to Big Derek Energy. And then Barkley went to Deshaun's Sexual Predators at number 10. A number 11, C.D. Lamb to Laporta Potties. And Tony Pollard went to uh, Only Here for Jimmy's. That's uh, Cassie, right? Yeah. Who is that? Who, Tony Pollard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was kind of a big deal. Let me just ask you sure. this. Are you in charge of Cassie's team, or is it really Cassie's team? Uh, let's just say I had an influence on those first few picks. Did she ask you for every single pick? No, she fell health. asleep at what time? I don't know when we started, but it was at, she. I think she started, you know, picked her starting lineup, right? And then it was uh, the bench that kind of auto drafted because it just got to be like midnight, right? And okay, so it started. auto. Yeah, that was a long draft. It man. was. I think you know, next time we'll go like midnight. We had fun. Listen, she's the champ, though. You know, we did have a lot of we fun. We had fun. But Cassie is, I got to give a shout out again. She is. She's a only champ. here for Jimmy. That's her team's name. She, she loves Jimmy. She G. does. Yeah, Jimmy. Oh fuck. Jimmy is a good-looking man, like myself, and she only <laughs> likes him because he's on the Niners. And they're both they're both creamy. humble. Yeah. Yeah, and they're both humble. Um. Yeah. So, Sean, who do you think's more humble, you or Jimmy G? Who's the most humble person? I out think there? Jimmy G is uh, probably Jimmy, a little more Jimmy, humble. Jimmy is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure, yeah. A Super yeah. Bowl leading quarterback, you know. Yeah, he, he could have been MVP. Humble. I love Jimmy. Could've I'm just been. looking at the teams right now. You know, I don't think there's very many terrible reaches. Mm, well, this, no, you can't ever okay, reach so we're, with we're, the first round, right? I mean, the first round draft pick. You, it well, is, I don't uh, know if I told you guys that I saw a guy draft Jared Goff number ten overall oh, in a listen, twelve team. Listen, listen, 
last year, the year, oh, year before last, was Jeremiah's first fantasy football league. We did it with okay. ESPN Silver Lake. He, that bastard, got the number one overall pick again. Who do you think he picked? Probably McCaffrey, right? No, 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 no. No, because no, he wasn't there yet. It was like oh, two years ago. This... It was probably Jimmy G. No, no, he wouldn't have picked Jimmy G. No, quarterback. Quarterback? quarterback? Uh, Matthew Stafford. He picked Mahomes, <laughs> number the one. Number one overall pick. <laughs> he finished you know, dead last. <laughs> I just, a couple yeah. years ago, people were doing that. Dave, I, I generally don't Dave, like what's to your story? in the first round. Dave, what's your story? You're about that one dude who the one guy picked, number one, because he needed this guy. Yeah, okay. Worst pick I've ever seen in my life, and I've been in lots of fantasy football leagues. This guy, very first year he was in our league, which is not for money, it's for bragging rights, but it's it's pretty competitive. Most yeah. people care. Yeah. The at, at stake is this really nice trophy that we pass around. It was like a four hundred dollar trophy that we got. Anyway, his very first year it's in the brand league, new he, driver. Was, he was picking number one overall. Four birdies. And I was uh, picking number two or three, and I was like thinking, oh, he's going to get like Odell Beckham, and then I'm not going to get him. This is, I just, whatever, you know. He picked Carson Palmer <laughs> with the number one overall pick. <laughs> and I, we all looked at it, we were like, did that really just happen? Like, the dude is like 40 years old, and he's not been a top quarterback in probably like seven years, right? Yeah, this is like 10 and years we ago. And we were like, something. I was totally dumbfounded that this guy picked, uh, Carson Palmer and so I was able to get Odell Beckham in like the two or the three spot and I was so happy with that and we we're all talking about it so we were like hey so what what was up with the Carson Palmer pick there and I think he's never done fantasy football before up until that point you know so he goes yeah I really like him and I wanted to make sure that I got him and we were like you know he would have been available later and he's like well when your guy's there you don't want to wait you just get your guy when he's available and we were like he would have like, gotta get him. gone undrafted gotta get him. yeah he would have been like you know last pick in the draft you know mr oh yeah yeah if he yeah. were even picked right i like that like it didn't phase the guy he didn't say oh yeah i guess i reached for him he was totally like oh yeah i wanted him i didn't want anyone well, else to get him and we were like okay the well, lions yeah, definitely so. subscribe by that philosophy when they're like they got gibbs they got campbell they People said they reached, but... Do you but, never know if if you do have a shot, uh, aside from Carson Palmer, number one overall, if you have an opportunity to get the guy that you want, you can't wait because another team, there's 31 other teams out there, they might snag that player listen, in the you next are round. absolutely right. This guy, Jeremiah, strikes again. He knows. He okay. got Ayuk. He also we, got Ayuk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ayuk is on fire. God damn it. Yeah, that first game, Ayuk he, had like 28 points, right? And is, then dude, McCaffrey had like 30. Ayuk is is um, on pace to get a massive payday. Once again, another 49er getting paid. Yeah, Can okay. You, you want to hear a little story? So a couple yep. years ago, um, the commissioner of our Dynasty League was uh, trying to acquire running back help, and I had Daryl Henderson. And he was like, I'll give you Ayuk for Henderson straight up. And I'm like, no, I would do, like, Henderson for Cooper Cup. And this was before Cooper Cup had, like, a record-breaking year, right? Uh -huh. We were really close. I was going to give him Henderson and, like, a third-round pick for Cooper Cup. And he goes, no, it's just not meant to be. And then now we all know Daryl Henderson's not in the league anymore. I could have had Ayuk multiple times, and I, I didn't believe in him. But I passed. I passed it up. Yeah, I think he was drafted in 2020. So this is... This would have been his rookie year. Yeah. 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 He was in the doghouse a little bit, you know, when he first started. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had an opportunity to have Ayuk. Okay. I, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle this back around. So what? We got our our twelve people. C D Lamb was he was picked and um what? Who else? Kelsey was picked and you know, the usual yeah, so, su suspects. So what yeah, what are no. those questions you got for us, Dave? You got some questions you're gonna throw our way, right? No. No? no. <laughs> I thought we talked about this. This was part of the plan. Oh, man. Um, all right. So what do you feel like What do you feel like your worst pick is? Aside from Chubb, obviously that's an injury that you can't predict. But what's a pick that you regret, Sean? Just a little gander here. 
Yeah, yeah I, it, it took me like, um, it took me a split second. I had to go, <laughs> quick run through uh, my Rolodex of players, and then I remembered. But you only had one auto draft, so, mm-hmm. and it was Jamar Chase. Yeah, okay. I know. Are you ready? No, you you, like he, he asked you first. You asked you first. I'll tell you mine in a moment. <laughs> you know, seriously. Don't want to be rude. No. Yeah. So if you go, if you go into the Yahoo and then just choose draft and then draft results, that's probably the quickest way to yeah, look at it. Yeah, it literally tells you the worst player that you picked statistically. Really? Well, I think the Yahoo draft results are skewed. I, I always consistently get really poor draft grades from Yahoo. But I Bell. typically do Whoever the heck well. Bell is. Just whoever the heck is okay, Bell. We, just say we Bell. talked about this. Just so. say Bell. You and I had actually a, a, you know, a decent conversation during this time. I yeah. was really on the fence with You with, did. With it was Bell. a really good call. Okay. It's a really uh, good call. No, the, call. The, worst, the worst pick. Not the best pick you've gotten. I know. It's, okay. Uh, well, it's, that's a very tough question. Because right now, so Brees Hall is very, he's questionable with uh, his knee, also questionable with his situation because he's on the New York Jets team. And they lost Aaron Rodgers. That automatically hurts them. Zach Wilson's their quarterback. Um, also, he has to have a timeshare with, who's the other guy? You're running back, right? You have him. So Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Uh, they're just they're they're struggling right now. There's so you're, you're the regretting the, the Brees Hall in the fourth round pick. Well, you know it was a high risk reward because I had a Nick Chubb on my team, so I was like, you know what, maybe this Chubby. could, you know, this could be a solid RB two, right? He was on pace to do a. Tr- oh uh, yeah, Brees Hall is RB one. So I mean, I think in the fourth round, that's that's a good spot to take him. Yeah, I mean, so it's I don't it's hard because right now I'm just I'm scrambling. I'm in scramble mode. Yeah. I got to. Uh, I've got a bunch of wide receiver twos, and I thought I had the best running back in the draft. Other yeah, than well, I'm, I'm noticing something about your team. So it looks like you're okay, one of those guys that drafts two defenses before you fill other needs. Um, no. <laughs> and wait a second. Stop. Hold on, there, partner. <laughs> um, I waited a long time to draft I, defenses. I, 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 personal philosophy is like maybe I'll typically take a defense like with my second to last pick interesting so that's what I do with the kicker and the defense yeah but remember like the, when the, the Cowboys got 36 points against the Giants and it swung yours <laughs> I mean th- right I mean like just God Micah Parsons step on my head when I'm drunk. so that that's yeah. something about like an IDP league that takes away the luck factor because a, a, in a, a like a team defense any given week could have a blow up so it's kind of like it's kind of like gambling a little bit you don't really know what's going to happen there's not as much skill involved with it yeah. but when you have a, a team of idp players there's more thought that goes into it so back to jeremiah that motherfucker if he was here right now i'd, I would punch him right in the face because he, he would be sleeping if he were the here. 49ers right in front of me again he did it He's got so, my guys. I was gonna draft the Niners and just be good with one defense. I don't care, right? Plug and play. I see, yeah, he, he every, took the 49ers defense in the ninth round. So I was, yeah. I was gonna do it. And everyone round? yelled at him. Ninth round? I did. I know. Well, I mean, so is he, point, is he not a 49ers fan, or was he doing it just oh, he, to get to you? No, he is though, because you know. Why can't I, you both be fans? No, he's not from the Bay Area. He's not. He, I mean, okay, are you an only fan? Would you say? No, 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 no. I took. I, I allowed him to come to the game two years ago, week wow. one versus Detroit, and it was a lot, a lot of fun mm-hmm. for you. Um, Wait, so you're from San Francisco area? San Cruz. Know. Just. Oh, right I thought you were there. from Traverse City. Well, also yes. Uh, so I moved. Think of your mind. I don't I, even know listen, who you are. I moved to Traverse City my senior year in high school in 2005, full time. Okay. And I, you know, 35 years old. So. Let me just ask this: like, Go if ahead. you if you were at a game, uh-huh. okay, yes. and uh, like Brock. And Purdy you were in. Hurt. If you were a quarterback and you were no, playing, no, no, no. You're, you're, in the, you're in the stands, <laughs> and they, the announcer says, "Hey, would anybody like to step in for Brock Purdy here? Anybody that could like." 
you know, fill in. Is there a is there a uh, aspiring quarterback who could have played in the NFL? Had they got the opportunity well, from like, the state of California here? I would need two play. beers in me just to feel a little bit loosey goosey and I'd sling that shit, dude. Mm -hmm. Two to five beers and anything over that, I'm just pe no. I don't want to even get. Hey, if coach would have only put you in, you, you, you feel you, know, you feel can like chuck you it could, over that mountain. You could yeah, actually, back for a series. Oh yeah, absolutely. NFL. Also, I can in run out and I can catch and I can run. So. Oh yeah, the total uh, package. Like, no. hey, total package. Do you feel like what do you what do you like um, profile to like uh, comparison like Taysom Hill? Uh, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Vick, more of a Michael <laughs> Vick, I'd say. Well, you know. So. I think we should do like a, a, a Sean combine to, to test him out, see like where he would stack up, like the pros versus Joes. Uh, show from back in the day yeah hey, give me a chance come just on give me, give me a break give me a break just just lift then go the drive ground. then go out there let's you know? go <laughs> do you feel like you could walk on to an nfl team right now or yeah of course he feels that bit? way can we get on to whatever the topic no, was like, at like, hand like, okay we know awesome. his answer okay sean so your regret was Brees hall it's up to me is it up to me <laughs> my regret is it me i don't know what i drafted this guy in but for some reason, I was thinking he was going to have a big year. And if my quarterback, who I got, I drafted Hurts, I think, in the third round. If Hurts might have gotten hurt, God forbid, Jesus, baby Jesus, please prevent that from happening. Then I would need another backup quarterback. And I thought to myself, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers looks like a really good pickup right now. He's got a guy named Garrett Wilson. He's just going to sling ball to him. He's got Alan Lizard. I do not have Garrett Wilson, nope. No, and I thought, well, you know, it'll be a little blend insurance policy here, and, you know, shit happens, and I can still pick up a bunch of points, theoretically. Yeah, didn't cost a lot. And we all know what happened. He got injured on the fourth play of their first question. game of the season. What do you think Aaron Rodgers is doing right now? He's, dude, he's got his feet, he's got his, his Achilles in some kind of, like, holy blessed water. Like, it's, like, in there, and somebody's, like, blessing in and, like, making it some kind of godly, you know, liquid. I think that's what's going on. My, my thoughts are, first thing I, I think of is he's probably, like, consuming um, psychedelic mushrooms or something. Maybe he's, like, in a tent somewhere just eating mushrooms yeah, just resting his calf. Yeah, you got to, like, get through. You got to get through it, right? You got to, like, mentally get through it. So, Dave, you're up. Who was your regret? We've got like we've got a couple more questions after this, so let's. Uh, pick wise or player wise, I I regret Rashad Bateman. He's just one of those guys. I'm not typically a fan of of receivers and offenses that don't know how to throw the ball. Who's he play for? So he's he's with the Ravens. He's like the two maybe. Uh, I don't know if he would be considered. He's probably the two receiver right now. Yeah, maybe behind Bob Hollywood Brown. Yeah. Number one or two. Not bad no, for not Hollywood Brown. Yeah, I mean, I took him in the eight, in the uh, the ninth round, and I'm not proud of it. But it was one of those like he was the only person that I could think of to take right there. So I took him. I probably won't in start the very round? often. In the ninth round. You're gonna regret a ninth round pick. He's probably just a waste How, of space. Are right you? Now. What do you yeah, mean? Are you a I'm also robot? Like my fifth round, my fifth round pick was Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> I regret and my I like ninth. It, there was a run of quarterbacks, and I needed to take a quarterback, Wait, or they're all going to be gone. QB one. I feel like Trevor Lawrence in the fifth is kind of a reach. But people were going for quarterbacks early in this league, and I couldn't wait too long. You know, That's where he was um, I'm happy. I'm happy with Anthony Richardson in the eleventh. I think if he can keep from getting more concussions, he could be a stud. Okay, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna tell everybody what my team is. Dave, if you want to tell us what your team is after this, and then Sean, just so there's context, people know who we're playing with. I've got Jalen Hurts as my quarterback, Jamar Chasse as my wide receiver one, DeAndre Hopkins as my wide receiver, I don't know, eight. Uh, That's a terrible D pick right there. Yeah, I tried to tell him that. DJ Chark as my uh, one of my wide receivers. Um, Gibbs as my running back one, Jamal Williams as my running back two, that Detroit connection, Darren Waller as my tight end, and then Pickens as my wide receiver on my uh, flex. I remember, time out, real quick, I remember one one day in the hallway, you're, you're climbing up the stairs and you're talking about DeAndre Hopkins. I think he could be a really good pick this year, you know. I just...
Just again, again, I'm not a fan of receivers <laughs> on teams that don't know how to throw the ball. Right. So I, I like, would stay away from anybody for the Titans and the Bears, for example. Maybe 10 years ago, bro. I just let it yeah. happen, dude. I was like, I'm not, he's the enemy. I can't just. You know, you know but I, I have uh, Josh Palmer on my bench. So, um, and then um, I, <laughs> I Smith Jr. is my second tight end for Cincinnati. Um, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, it's and, yeah. and Chase Claypool as one of my wide receivers from Chicago. So if you guys want to trade, I am open for trade. I just like you know, give me some kind of suggestions. Give me some kind of like. I just can't even look at it. You, what, here, you pull up your team, Dave. You tell us who you drafted. Then we got to give them these questions. You have you have four players on your team that. Dave, uh, their I names think you're start up. With ja. <laughs> you got Jamar Chase, Jamir Gibbs, Jalen Hurts. And Jamal Williams. Did you count? That was intentional. And you counted Josh Palmer? <laughs> no. Nope, um, all right. So my yeah, Josh, I give us life to us. I mean, if that's like the message here. Okay, I I digress. Here, go for it, Dave. The, so normally, what I'll do is. It, I don't always carry all the players that I draft. I, I make lots of waiver moves. So by the end of the season, typically, like, I'll only have about 50 or 60% of my original players. So I'm not going to say, like, by um, position here. I'm just going to say by my draft. But Bijan in the first, Jalen Waddle in the second, Aaron Jones in the third, which I'm kind of regretting that now. Mark Andrews in the fourth, Trevor Lawrence in the fifth, Jonathan Taylor in the sixth. I felt like I, I couldn't pass it up. I couldn't pass up an opportunity to have him, even though the risk is maybe he might not play this year. I, I feel like he will. Risk. In the sixth round, though, you, you can't, you know, I don't think he would have lasted much longer past the sixth. Uh, seventh round, Mike Evans, which could be a little steal. No! There. You got Mike Evans in the seventh round? I think he's a top three wide yeah. receiver. Come right on! <laughs> I Why am I so dumb? Because it was Baker Mayfield, you know. Oh, and I got my Rashad God. White. Rashad Bateman, that wasn't intentional. Huge regret. Quinn Johnston, who I've already Who's dropped your, do you him. Do you have your team up there? Oh. Yep, Anthony Richardson, Tyler Boyd, Jalen Warren, who could end up getting some touches. Najee Harris does not look good. No. Jalen Warren has lots more pop. I've already dropped Alec Pierce. I've dropped Jalen I don't, Johnson. Dave, I don't know who I half these guys are. are. I don't, even, I don't know who half these Alan guys are. Guys are. Alan Johnson, Davis, Michelson. I think it's like, worse than mine, and I lost the Chubster. Jamarius, funny, Coltman. Man. That's funny. You know, how's I, Coltman I've, I've doing? I've already made some moves. Okay, okay. Sean, two and congratulations. I'm two and Sherman, Wilson, Pants. Right. I'm also, I think, like second in point, points scored. So I'm putting up points. So do you guys remember when um, – I was talking about the quarterback position, and uh, I was starting to panic a little bit because everybody started flying. I do. I remember like that, the yeah. eighth, the ninth round went by. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe when I got the Tua. Who? Oh? I know she picked Daniel Jones, and then like two picks later, you picked no, Tua. No, I, I, I grabbed Daniel Jones in front of me. You're exactly right. Did you really? Yeah, I grabbed you Tua grabbed Daniel Jones in like the after. seventh or eighth, and then you grabbed Tua well, in like the tenth, I think. I th you know, that's that's my philosophy is waiting to grab a quarterback because there's only a couple points differential between each game. Yeah, 25 So I'm trying to grab some value there yeah. because I had the 6 of 12, which isn't terrible, but it's not great. It's, it's a, my, it, in this case, it proved the worst. But I got Devontae Smith with Philly. Okay, he's a yep. potential wide receiver one. T Higgins. T Higgins, can we just take quick tangent? Um, <laughs> when you are <laughs> threw up a goose egg week one, and I lost my point and a half. Yeah, my brother, my older brother, his team is Space Angel Dust, and he beat he beat him like one thirty six point eight to one thirty five point seven. It was like a point away from winning, and the game went into that was the game. It was the Jets, and it was the – who was it? I hate I, how can I – I can't even think of it. Who was it? The, uh, the, it was the, the, the Jets Bills. The Bills and the Bills. And the Bills. And uh, so, of course, it goes into overtime, and yeah. your percentages – You we were looking at your percentages in the fourth. Yeah. I just needed – You had Brees Hall. I don't think we set that up. You Brees had Brees Hall. Hall. Let's, yeah, we got to establish – 
Hey, you had Brees Hall. You were um, three points away at most of the time, like, and then you were two points away. And the score, I don't remember what the score, I think it was like 14, 17. I don't know. Oh, uh, what, the uh, game? Scoring the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah something. It was a low score. And it was 13 16. It wasn't a 13 16. And then the one, and then the Bills kicked it, and they went into overtime. And I thought they had the momentum, momentum going in there. They won the coin toss. Wait. They won the coin toss. Your odds of winning with Brees Hall on your team that night, they had gone from, I think they were 4% in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then they yeah. swung up to fifty three percent. I mean, my own. I said the only chance I have right now is to go into overtime. I need Brees Hall to make a pass and catch. You yeah. know, just break off for ten yards, whatever. One catch. Yeah, he just needs one. One and a half points. And then the Bills got the ball. They punted, and they punted it to our guy, all of our guys, right? Xavier Gibson with a P. Gibson. He like he took it. What? And then he ran back around, and then he ran up like I think I want to say he ran up the the, what, the left sideline. Yeah, he was up the left sideline, and he just like sprinted, and he got down to like the 15. And there was the punter, and there was a lineman right there, and the, all the guys did their jobs. One one of his teammates blocked, and then Gibson like juked the other guy out. He ran in for the touchdown. And the moral of the story is that the Jets didn't have the chance to get the ball back. And then Brees Hall didn't have the chance to run for any more yards. The so so the game the ends. <laughs> and Sean still has the 135.7 points. And he doesn't win the game. Meanwhile, T. Higgins couldn't get a single point. <laughs> a single point. So I would say in, in week one, that's not as heartbreaking. You can still have lots of time to come back from that. But I'm just look, you know what I'm looking at here. I just want to prove a point that Yahoo doesn't really know what they're talking about when it comes to draft grades, because you are 0 and 2 right now, Sean. You got an A minus on your draft grade. Um, I, for example, got a D. I but I'm in dra- first okay. place. I would argue so I saying. drafted better than you, sir. But oh come on, Sean, Sean will argue that he's right in the most subjective context, and it's classic. I love it. But we gotta keep going. You gotta tell us who, can, who else is on your team. You got defenses. T Higgins. I'm surprised you didn't draft two kickers. But interesting. Okay, that okay, okay. Whoa, well, well, whoa. Let's keep That's it above the belt. Above the belt. Who is it? Who'd you grab? Uh, Jonathan Taylor. He's not on the team right now, technically. <laughs> in the sixth, in the sixth round. Man. Jeremiah also drafted Cooper Cup. Okay, but after T Higgins. T Higgins, Mike Williams. Los Angeles Chargers wide mm-hmm. receiver. Brees Hall, we all know about him. Good call. AJ Dillon. My boy, George Kittlet. People's okay. tight end. 11 points. Yeah, 11 points. totally overrated, man, that guy. I will smash your Cam face Sun, into a he's, car he's a, That's a tough spot, Cam Sutton, right there, because you don't know what's going on with Denver's Portland quarterbacks. And, I mean, it's, it's, oh, yeah. It's, not, yeah, yeah. Cortland Sutton. Okay. okay. I think you're right, actually. So, I grabbed this KJ guy. KJ Bourne, play him. KJ Bourne. Yeah, pick him, him off the waiver. DJ yep. Jones. Wait, wait. No, Daniel Jones. Daniel. No, you don't need to, No, <laughs> no. Uh, Elijah Mitchell. You okay. love him. He's a 49er. I just... Actually, I hope I never get to play him M. because Brida. that means Christian McCaffrey is not on the field. I want him on the field. Let's go, Niners! He's got one of those teams where I've, I don't recognize any of these players' names either, so I think he's going to win. Yeah, well, you know, there's Matt Brietta and a couple other guys. Uh, the yeah. The guy from the Niners, he's from Michigan. His name is Ronnie Bell. Ronnie Bell? Get some. Ronnie Bell, is a, it's a famous name in Michigan, that's for sure. And I drafted uh, Deontay Johnson from Pittsburgh. Um, I got, yeah. And he's, he's out still, right? He is, yeah. I got a little bit of the injury bug, but you know what? Let's not give up. Keep, okay. Keep then you got um, Jason Sanders. For Miami the, kicker. Yep. New York Jets and points. Pittsburgh. Defense. Good defenses. Yeah, the Jets defenses. is historic, apparently. Dave, we're moving on to the next question you got for us. Let's hear it. She's putting me on the spot here. No, I am. I drafted better than you. Ah. <laughs> you want to do, like, draft-related questions or more, like... Let's uh, give a more general topic. Let's go more general here. General topic. I'd say, like... What's a football, like a bad play call that you've seen in a game that just will stick with you for the rest of your life? 
something that you're like, I can't believe the refs missed that, or I can't believe this just happened? Like, what's your, like, head-scratching moment? I know that you guys are both Lions fans somewhat, right? <laughs> no, yeah. not at all? Yeah. I mean, I well, feel he's like a Niners Lions fan. fans. He would, bleeds whatever yeah. they're what, what's a play? Bowl. What's a, like, a... Uh, a call by a ref that has just Ooh. stuck with you for years. Oh my gosh. Well, there was a couple calls in the Super Bowl 2019 against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Niners were up 10 or 10 points with seven minutes to go at one point. I don't know. They were not calling the holes on Nick Bosa. They were doing these. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. This. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, it was a, a huge, crucial play, too, when it was third down 15, third and 15 for the Chiefs, and uh, we gave up the first down. Richard Sherman was doing so good all season okay. long. I used can, to hate that can guy we, so much. Can we, um, can we just talk about the Niners and their history and how they're one of the cornerstone franchises of the NFL? They've got one of the richest histories. They're going up against Kansas City Chiefs, who do not have a very rich history. They might have won, like, a Super Bowl here or there. Um, I think. You know, World Championship, maybe before the Super Bowl. But, you know, it's not one of the cornerstone franchises, but they have the franchise player. They've got the Pat Mahomes, right? And he – you always want a superstar if you're a league. You want somebody who's marketable. Well, and Correct. Yeah, and Mahomes, I mean, he's your boy. The he's the guy, right? Not your boy, but... In the most important position of all sports, quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, that was the difference maker, I think. It was, I mean, so look you, at you, the roster of the 49ers today and then, back then. We were better, roster-wise. Yeah, you just have to get rid of your good players, right? Because they want to get paid. So the better you are, the harder to stay good it is. It is very hard. I mean, so, uh, they still managed to do that, but we haven't had that that guy, that elite quarterback, to get us over the hump. <laughs> well, what? We haven't had that elite quarterback to get – you mean, like, okay, I understand, like, you mean, like, Let's in go. recent history. Okay. Yeah, but, like, to – oh, woe is me. We didn't have Joe Montana – we didn't have no, Steve I'm talking, Young. Oh, no, we didn't no. Have, okay. I understand. I you're understand. But, like, I understand Joe, what you're talking Joe about. Joe Montana fan. is the GOAT. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's one of the GOATs, 100%. He's on the Mount Rushmore of NFL quarterbacks, for sure. I'm talking. Speaking okay. of Mount Rushmore, is Patrick Mahomes going to be on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks by the time his career is over? He's not better than Steve Young. It's no so, it's so, what do you do? It's so subjective. What do you do there? I don't know. Okay. What, what, where are we? Where are we? Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I wanna, let's, have, let's just, like, okay, me, I would what's love one? to get an episode of just talking about our teams and, like, let's, I mean. Well, hey, we're going to talk about the Lions too. and why the Lions are the best you can franchise about, out there, ooh. you know. Yeah. But, but, okay, so, so one, one play that sticks with me. I have to say it's that uh, the one catch with Calvin Johnson where he catches it in the end zone. I think oh, okay. I think Dallas, they're playing. The yeah, it's Dallas or the Bears regular season. I think oh, it's the Bears season. regular season. And Calvin catches it in the end zone. He's got two. His hands are large. He's got two hands on the ball. He he the ball um, touches the ground as he goes down, but he's got clear control over it. And as he stands up, he uh, lets go of the ball. And they rule it an incomplete pass, <laughs> like they're psychopaths. Yeah, did not did not maintain possession. That that was the example I was gonna give personally, of a play that you're like, did this really just happen? The other one for me is like Des Bryant reaching for the end zone. Like he had possession, he turned up field, took a couple steps, dove forward, and outstretched his arm to hit the goal line, and the ball came out, and they said he never had possession of it. It's like the, the guy had two feet down, made a football move. It's not. What was that? What, what was the pass. context? Was I want to say I want to say it was like a divisional game. It was maybe against the Packers, and if they had won that game, they could have gone on. That would have been legacy changing for somebody like Tony Romo. Do you know the play I'm talking about, where Des Bryant got totally boned out of that 
that yeah, game. they were talking that was about, about it recently. That was like a year or so after it was, it was the, the Calvin um, Johnson got screwed over. What was the Jefferson? Justin Jefferson let go of it this past week too of of the season. Jefferson let go and went to the, went to the end zone. It was a touchback, so they they did harken back to that play. Yeah. That's a that's a odd rule though. Like you have possession, you it is. You're it, totally you boned at that point. You, yeah, you're totally boned. I don't know why they they have that. I guess maybe like disincentivize people from diving towards the pylon or diving over the, the goal line and possibly losing it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if coaches say like, "Hey, be really careful about losing possession at the goal line there," because I don't think players realize it's, like, "Hey, you're going to lose the ball." Together, well, yeah, but you're also going to lose six points, right? So it's like a double a kick in the nuts. Yeah, it depends on your angle, too. I mean, usually they're having to use every single space on that sideline there. If It depends on where you're coming in at. You have to protect that ball, but usually if you can, if you can somehow stretch and make that athletic move and just touch the pylon, they yeah, like like Tyler Sean, Lockett let me, let me, did let me for the Lions. Ask a question for Sean. Sean, if it was you, would you have done that? So would you have fumbled the ball there, or would you have held on to it? <laughs> Absolutely not. I would have. You never would have fumbled it. No, you would have scored it. Okay, I would have hit that shit. Yeah, you just, never. Like how you often? The like, you, I just how often do you watch a play and you're like, I would have made that catch? Yeah, you every time he would have made that catch. I got great hands. Great hands, the best. Okay, let's do a little podcast with me and the football. I promise. Promise you. Okay, yeah. Okay. We'll, we, hey, we we'll strap throw. the phone the onto the football, together. and then we'll Next throw we that. Together, we need to play the drop <laughs> game. We might lose the phone. What? We'll play the, dro- we'll play the drop game next time we get together. Okay. We'll do like a little triangle, and first to three drops is out. Cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, okay, next question. We got two more Let's remaining go. here. Let's go. Good, good on the fly, Dave. That was a good one. None of us hit anything that was like, past the 2010 so we're obviously very very biased there are games that date back to like the 1940s and 50s so obviously there's a little bias we have but you know that's what what can we do we got lives to live and all that shit so right you're not okay on to our third question of the night what is it david throw it at us you know kind of a a jersey question here so i i feel like you know i already know sean's a jersey kind of guy i've never i've never bought a jersey before but if you could only have one jersey of, of your favorite player, who who's only jersey would one? You own? Only one. That's a great question. Yeah, because the Niners have so many legends. You, Let's go. Jerry Rice, though. When do you say Jerry Rice or Montana? It's got to be Montana or Rice. Montana is my yeah. favorite player of all time. But Jerry Rice of is all time. literally yes. yes. But he's Jerry is right behind him. Like it's it's close because I was a quarterback growing up and I just love Joe. He's just a rock star, like Steve Young too. I did love you him. play? Did you play quarterback in high school then? I did. Yeah. Middle okay. School, that, high school. Okay. So if you could go, let me one more follow up question. If you could go back to your high school right now and start for them at quarterback, would you be all state? I would right now. I'd just fucking just destroy. It. <laughs> I'm so much bigger and stronger now. <laughs> I would just fuck those guys up, dude. So bad. Let's just yeah. hope my knees hold up. You know. When okay. do, you, do you go back to your high school and watch games ever, and, and you go like, hey, put me in coach. I, just, I still got some eligibility left. I just want to go like the longest yard on them. Like, why, is, why is that dad playing with uh, teenagers? <laughs> you hear these like um, stories in the news pop up from time to time about like uh, an adult infiltrating like a middle school or a high school pretending to be a student and then like joining the team yeah but i think they're more. usually I like sociopath sean, i could see pass. sean doing that there's like, there's like, one yeah i'm 17. there's like there's <laughs> like, a famous like case of a russian girl coming over and she was like in her 30s or 40s and she convinced this family to adopt her and they thought she was like 16 years old but she was in her 40s and it's just that's the that's anyway how do we get <laughs> come on let's go okay dave who would whose jersey would you buy or wear i would i would have a mccaffrey jersey yeah what if i could only have one it would be a mccaffrey jersey I love and then McCaffrey, my second man. if i had if i could no 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 you can't say ah, two okay. no fuck well, off you cannot John, say number two John no Dave. John gave two answers. No, 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 no. You're not going to steal my thunder. You're not going to steal my thunder. I did number one, number two. 
Okay, McCaffrey it is. You can if if I say what mine is and you have the same one, then you know, just let me know. But if you want to tell us your number three, I'm not opposed to that. Okay. No, I not you, my, not I you. Wear a Miles Garrett jersey. <laughs> Miles Garrett? Okay. Yeah. Because if I had to pick a current Heart. player jersey right oh, now, God. it'd be very difficult. Oh, Nick when Bosa. You, when you're just, just, I want to get a Nick Bosa just, jersey. Just, just like, no, I got He's Devo, a... I got McCaffrey, I mean, <laughs> what is Brock what Purdy the guy. You had to, the jersey that you bought of the player has to be their size, so like I'd have to get like an XXXXL <laughs> <Yeah>. Miles Garrett <laughs> jersey. But I feel like some of these guys, like if I had a McCaffrey jersey, that would just be a large. It wouldn't be an extra large. I could, I could wear that. Oh, It'd be an XL he because he's got pads on, and it would have to be an XL, yeah. Okay, okay on to me. Whose jersey would I have? I grew up all, all the time we have. Folks, thanks for Whatever. tuning in. Coming time from a Lions fan who's Alex never won anything. So if I had, a, you know, my I would sleep in it. So it's incredible. I don't already have it, but the greatest running back of all time, Barry Sanders. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, yeah, I can he see is that. the guy is legendary. He's he played for a terrible team, for a cursed franchise, with a non-existent offensive line, with a mediocre quarterback. He didn't have anything. It was like, I mean, the fact that the guy did what he did. He retired after ten seasons. He had the second most rushing yards after that. He was destroying Emmett Smith. I mean, Emmett Smith is a great running back, of course. Maybe one of the greats, you know, two or three of all time. But Emmett Smith is one of those quantity over quality guys. And if Barry Sanders had not abruptly retired, he would have smashed the record. Smashville. He would have taken us straight to Smashville. Who played more seasons? Emmett Imagine Smith if, by if far. Barry, Barry Sanders Cardinals, played yeah. behind the Dallas line. Yeah. Like he would have played that. for the Cowboys. He probably would have averaged. He played behind the Cowboys O line, which is one of the greatest of all time. He would have averaged 200 yards a game. No. Yeah. Or two million. <laughs> or two million. Okay. You know I love no. Barry. I, I, I got to say, like, I, I love great. Barry Sanders. I'm kind of holding a small grudge against him because I went to the Lions camp a couple times as a kid, and he was never there. Oh. He never was at camp. The only autograph I could ever get was Jason Hansen. All the kids were always like, is Barry Sanders here? And they were like, no, he's not here. Well, well I've got a story to tell you that when they did it at Saginaw Valley State University, my hometown, Saginaw Asti, well, when they did the training camp there, then I was out there with my cousin, and we were waiting for Barry Sanders to walk through. He was like, he was there. He was at training camp. And I had a yeah. uh, marker and a pen, and I was next to my cousin, and my cousin, he's from San Francisco, as a matter of fact, lived down the street from Robin Williams. His dad went to school with oh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. <laughs> and he's right next to me, and Barry's coming through. He's, like, walking down. He's signing, you know, autograph here and autograph there. And my cousin, his name is Beck. He's from my mom's side of the family, actually. Maybe it's my dad's side, but his name is Beck. My last name is Becker. He's right there, you know, ready to get an autograph. He, he steps forward, and as my twin brother, who's also there, recalls, me elbowing him out of the way and then pushing myself forward and then leaning forward to give Barry my pen and paper, which he promptly takes, and then he signs his name onto it, and then I take it and I look at my cousin Beck, who's a little defeated, as you might imagine. <laughs> so Barry was at training camp. He was there. I can verify. Do you still have it? Of course I do. Yeah, of course I got it. You should bring it off for the next podcast. Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've got to call some people. I've got a company that watches it day it. and night. <laughs> Is it a safety deposit box? Did you just make that whole thing up? I did not make that whole thing up. I think I have the autograph. I'll have to look for it. I definitely did not make that up. One, one follow-up question for Sean. Yes. If you had to throw a football over a mountain, yeah. how many throws would it take you to get oh, the football over the mountain? I can do that. On the, the, on the one throw? Yeah. That would be a great. That'd be a great content to like see how many throws it would take him to throw, throw it over, over the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, I would imagine like thousands of throws. I don't thousands? know. You know, he's got to tap into thousands. something deep, a deep reserve. I could do it on the first try. Okay, Uncle Rico. <laughs> Uncle Rico, come on, Dave. Keep us on track. What What's number four? Give us our fourth question here. It. Yeah. So fantasy football slash general. If you had to uh, start a fantasy football team. And you had the number one overall pick, and you could pick any player from any generation of the NFL. Who would be your number one overall pick? 
I don't know, Tom Brady? I don't know. And if, uh, hold on. Well, I would, it's not Carson Palmer, but I feel like <laughs> Tom, I guess like a fantasy team, if you had to start a real NFL team, I think. Oh, okay. I can see the but difference in the line of question team, in here. Because Tom Brady's one of those guys. Number like, he's one had a lot of great overall years. pick in history. I zoned oh. out. It's, sorry, it was just one of those things I do from time to time. That's, right? that's on like, me. Who would you, that's who would you me. want to have dinner with? It was who would you pick number one overall? Overall fantasy? I don't know. Jonathan Taylor, 2001, or 2021. I don't know. Most people in Michigan would know. love to suck. <laughs> We're going to edit that sucker right yeah. out. <laughs> I just fucking hate the, oh, man. It's Which, just, I've heard it forever, forever, 20 years I've been so, here. So you you are not a fan of Tom Brady then? No, I I, I respect him now. It's, he, it was okay. the Ugg boots for a while and just the constant. What I didn't like was his threat to my guy, you know, Joe Montana, the greatest of all time, and, Tom Brady, he's he's the greatest, you know. Where, just, okay, so Tom Brady, winning. do you think Tom Brady is the greatest? No, greater than, no, than Joe I don't Montana? think he's better than Joe Montana. I don't. Okay. I don't because the league is different now, today. It's yeah. it's different. It back then. Sure, you could you could hit the quarterback. I back mean, then. listen, <laughs> listen, your head would get ripped to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane, dude. Can you imagine playing back in the 80s and 90s against the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants question, just trying question, to kill question you? Question for Alex. If Sean has had too much drink, you ever worry he's going to put you through the drywall by mistake? Just oh, like, yeah, right now. He's just like, whoa! <laughs> I think he's got. I think he's got like a dial. You know, um, um, issues. He's got issues. Um, Sean, let me ask you this: Do you think you could pick Alex up over your head? Yes. <laughs> we are so off a topic. Okay, I don't, can we just? I've got one last question I want to throw out. Do we? You, are we going to answer this last one? Oh, I got to like who would I? Who would I? Yeah, the number, number one overall from? fantasy. Point. I don't know. I don't. It's it like every year it's different, right? So all time though. Yeah, all time. It's, it doesn't matter. It's what you want. Probably. I'd say. Yeah, I would say. Um, Jerry I, Rice. I, I probably would have. I would have said Jerry Rice myself too, because of longevity. Now, if it was like just one year, the best league today. season, it would probably be either Calvin Johnson or maybe like Cooper Cup. But if it was going to be a team that you're going to have for like Damon ten Thompson, years or more, right? it'd did. be Jerry Rice. Ladainian Tomlinson would be a great pick. Jerry Rice, though, hands down, which should be the player that gives you the most points over the span of his career. I think so Calvin. I'd Rice. go with Calvin just because I'm a homer. Guy. Yeah, I'm a homer. I mean, he's good. He's he's probably number two or three. Yeah, yeah. Behind right, Ray yeah. Moss. Yeah. Behind the monster. Yeah. You got Moss. One more, one more question for you. Well, no, no, I got, I want to get a question here myself. Let me, let me get a question here, okay? You got your four you, questions. Yeah. Come on, you, you know, yeah. now it's like waivers, right? Okay. So, quite, uh, uh, like this is a segment called "Guys Who Did Better Than You Would Have Expected," and you hope they continue the upward trend versus guys who didn't play as good as you would have hoped, and hope they turn it around. But you never know because football involves. A lot of guesswork, and you're really into making an assumption, and you can never really tell. That was sure. your, Dave. I think that was your. I just wanted to. That was one of your topics that you wanted yeah. to get uh, into. So week week one, I would say a guy that did better than I would have expected, but I'm not surprised that he did well. And but I don't know if he's going to keep it up. Slightly different question, but that's okay. Well. Slightly different Slightly question. Different. So Calvin Ridley, first week. Oh yeah. He had a great week, right? And I was like, I didn't expect him to do this well. I thought he was going to do okay, but he's falling back down to earth now. Mm. So that's how I feel I about was... Chase Claypool. Week after week, from and week so one to week two, Chase he fell Claypool off, right? plays fantasy football, and even he doesn't have himself rostered. So he's like <laughs> less than one percent owned. You Let's and Chase, Bazinga. you and Chase Claypool's mama are the only people that have him on the team. <laughs> Chase doesn't even have him. How do you know that? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. It's just a. An He's projecting. He's projecting. I think if we got, if we got Chase Claypool on the podcast, he would say that he dropped himself two years ago. 
now. I mean, if you're, you got to be honest with yourself, right? If you, <laughs> when you got to be honest, yeah. if you're playing with Justin Fields as your throwing quarterback, Ooh. then, yeah, yeah, he's not in a good situation. There's a reason the Steelers let him go. Yeah, he had that one great rookie year, and he's just been downhill from there. Right, what else we got? So, but yeah, okay. as far as the player that that isn't doing very well and you want him to bounce back i would say dalvin cook i mean he's gotta gotta get it figured out but that the jets are just so terrible right now i'm, I'm still holding out hope but yeah. what are your what are your two uh players here guys well i mean what i'm pleasantly surprised by is tua after well it was probably week one and then week two daniel jones goes completely off against the arizona cardinals why did I not see that? Or see that? They're the worst team in the NFL. They're actually pretty well, pretty good. Yeah, I overthought that I benched him in I, one of my leagues in favor of Anthony Richardson. I mean, Tua hurt. just put up like 45 points, like three, 400 yards, multiple touchdown passes in week one. Of course I was going to start well, again. Well, didn't, didn't Tua kind of Fuck. shit the bed a little bit week two? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. week one, he went completely off. And then I started him and Daniel Jones came back down. Three touchdowns yep. to Cardinals, which is it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my yeah. You might want to read the question one more time, Alex, just to refresh the viewers. No. So yes. it's no, the no, no, uh, no, 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 no. it's Please. called guys who did better than you would have expected, and you hope they continue the upper trend versus guys who didn't play as good as you would have hoped, and hope they turn it around. But you never know because football involves a lot of guesswork. And you're really making an assumption, and you can never really tell. So you the guy out, you who cut out there, could you say that again? The, <laughs> so the segment is called "Guys Who Did Better Than You Would Have Expected." Okay, I think yeah, I got we got it. this, Jake. We got him. Who are your guys? Um, I would say um, I don't know Nakua. I mean, come on, like, did anybody see that guy come in? He did a lot better, and then guys who didn't do as good. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, let's be honest here. <laughs> let's, isn't, it, isn't that the moral of the story? That's all what you want to hear. That, that pick of mine is not a very good one. I thought he might be wide receiver one in Tennessee. And Tannehill, you know, he's got to throw it to somebody. Woof! You know what? I, I'm glad that you're distracted because you're kind of an easy target in mm -hmm. fantasy football. It's like... You know, it's it tough. Like, I got a really tough good to do it all. smoking this guy, right? It's, it's tough, tough to do right, it all. You gotta, so if I, if I were you, I would try to talk up DeAndre Hopkins as much as you can in the group chat and try to trade him to somebody. <laughs> so anybody. that's why I Those think he's... Those threads are serious. That's why he's one of the guys who did better than I would have expected and hope that he continues the upward trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's why he's one of those guys. So if you guys want to trade for him... But I, how many more questions? We can't do that many more questions. This guy, you got, you know, you got more podcasting to do tomorrow. You got more obligations, Dave. You've got more podcasting to do tomorrow. We've got more obligations, more podcasting in the podcasting life. So we gotta wrap it up. We gotta go home. Everybody's wondering where we are. I already am home. Oh yeah, I mean, Sean's gotta go home. Is really what I have to no, say. No, he's crashing at your place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, across probably, the hall. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can just see like after you guys turn off the computer, you got a like old school wrestling match. Sean's gonna like pick you up over his head, spin you around a little we bit. We hugged so it do... out. We hugged it out. He's heavy. Yeah, I'm He's thick. Big, okay, but you could pick him up with one hand. You said. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, interesting. A little contradiction here. Girl, just well, 250 pounds. <laughs> I am I not 250 viewers, pounds. The viewers will want to see that for next time. He rows. Yeah, I row, baby. I row. Okay, well, that's four birdies. You know, that's why you're here for four birdies. That's the four birdies. Uh, yeah, football fantasy podcast. We're going to be back again. Episode one. We're coming back every Monday night. Every Monday night. Well, you'll hear it on Tuesday. People will hear it on Tuesday. And uh, we're going to be here. We're going to be talking about yeah, our team. I would say thanks, in. everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, that was cool. Thanks. Let's dive really quickly into the alien topic really quickly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are all these UFOs? Yeah, where are they coming from? What's going on? Okay, to be continued. You're going to hear that in the next one amongst other football fantasy jargon, hoopla, whatever you want to call it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. And we will talk to you soon.
Peace out. Peace out. Hey town. Hey town. S town. D town. Did Dave actually hang up? I think he did. Wow.